Hello gamers, it is nice. Welcome back to another live stream. Today we will we will be reviewing MMO PAX Day. This is a project that I've been a little excited about, been looking into it for a while. We played the first test and I really like everything that I'm seeing. Today, I wanna to review a couple of videos uh, that I haven't watched and kind of watch it with you guys and get that feedback together. And we're gonna be doing the, uh, we're gonna be watching the videos from content creator Eltari. I'll have a link to his uh, channel in the description. Highly recommend following him if you want the latest in MMO PAX Day news and footage. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's get into it. If you're watching this at a later date, feel free to skip ahead a couple of minutes while I get the stream setting set up. Thank you guys so much. I'll be right back with you. How you doing, Hog? How you doing, Makashi? Welcome on in. Welcome on in. Just making sure to stream settings and uh, get some people in here before we get into it. Just get the link posted in Discord. Welcome on in, everyone. Welcome on in. And I'll get the uh, camera going here shortly as well. I'm a little bit, uh, I'm kind of a little bit late today, Ham Hog. Little bonus stream, but I'm doing fine. How are you, HD? Welcome on in. All right, so I am good to go. Um, I got one of the videos queued up already, and we'll kind of go ahead and get started here shortly. Let's get make sure the camera's working. I, I was having some trouble with my camera, which is what took me so long. Okay, yeah, it's working. Looking pretty crisp too. All right. Make sure I can see both chats. How you doing, Nirvani? Happy to see you as well. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. All right, so let's turn uh, the music off and uh, give a proper introduction. All right. So let me make sure I can share my screen with you guys. And uh, before we get into the footage, let me uh, do our pleasantries here. Uh, let's see. How you doing, Sanity? Welcome on in. All right, we'll do that. All right, so today we're going to be looking at some upcoming footage for, uh, well, some footage for upcoming MMO PAX Day. As I mentioned, I am excited because I haven't watched this. So if you guys aren't aware, Mainframe, who is the developers of uh, PAX Day, have been releasing a lot more footage than they have in a while uh, via content creator El Tari. This is his channel here. I'm subscribed. I'm not signed in on this account, as you can see, but uh, this is his channel. It's linked in the description. If someone can actually uh, type his uh, channel there into the uh, chat, I'll actually like to pin that. But uh, yeah, it's in the description as well. And he's been putting out a lot of good videos uh, on PAX Day, a lot of information, a lot of things to get you up to date, know what to expect for their Alpha 2. It's going to be a, it's going to be very different than what we saw in their first test. Uh, PAX Day is going to be having a lot more features this time around. You know, last time it was more of a, 
light survival. It was mainly focused on the building and gathering. I would say this time around, we're going to have a lot more features. Uh, there's going to be PVP this time around. So that's actually the first video that we're going to take a look at is this one right here titled Pack Stay Wilderness Alpha Devs Talk All Things PVP. And then after that, I want to watch the dungeon one. These are two videos I haven't watched yet. Uh, I did actually watch I want to say the first four minutes of this when it uh, came out two weeks ago. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to save that and kind of binge them all at once. So I think this will be good to get some feedback from you guys. If you guys don't know, I cover Ashes of Creation here on the channel. Uh, MMO I'm really, really excited about. And besides that, this is the one that I have. This is the MMO that I have on my radar outside of that. Um, and I, I'm excited to play. I also have been in contact with the developers, so we'll have a lot of keys to give away on the 22nd. So, uh, excuse me, on the 23rd, the alpha releases on the 23rd and I'll be getting the keys the 22nd, if I remember cor uh, correctly. If you guys have not done so, please make sure you sign up. Make sure you sign up for this alpha test. Uh, a link on how to do that was in today's community post. So if you want to listen and make sure you are signed up, make sure you do that. Uh, Cracker says, I saw the video on the dungeon and the combat did not look really good. It is an alpha, so um, we'll take a look. Um, I'm going to try to judge it as an alpha, but obviously offer critiques for things for the future. Uh, but try to keep an open mind. But, you know, I'm a firm believer that just because something is an alpha doesn't mean completely excuse everything you see. Still offer feedback, but you also got to take it with a tiny grain of salt, you know. Uh, but, yeah, once again, um, shout out to Eltari. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Hello and welcome back, Paxians. I'm Altari, the professional gamer, and this is the second part of the developer interview series for the Pax Day Wilderness Alpha. And today is a day that many of us have so all been So something very I want to go ahead and give attention to. Also, let me know if the volume's okay, you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, it could definitely change. So something I want to draw attention to is this is something I did here uh right here you see this in the top right corner pvp active full loot on volume good thank you that's how do you think that's gonna be a huge turnoff for a lot of people do you guys think that's gonna be a huge turnoff for a lot of people like i'm wondering man like I i'm really wondering well, let me get you guys this feedback before we get into anything you say yes um not many games, not new, too many new MMOs, I should say, do a full loot uh, system, which is why I asked that. Uh, I know it deters a lot of people. I don't want to use the term. Um, well, I'll say it deters a lot of people. There's a lot of people that don't like the idea of PvP anyway. So to make your PvP full loot is very ambitious. Um, I really like that. Uh, there's a chance they, they change this a lot down the line. You know, it's a work in progress. This is not, you know something uh that's set in stone it is a we're still pre-alpha but what do you guys think about that no i don't even think you flag optionally so my theory i haven't watched it yet but my theory uh from the discord notifications that i saw if i remember correctly don't quote me on it we're gonna find out shortly is that there's a specific zone what do you guys think about that i wonder if there's just a specific zone uh some of you guys may have seen this already and already know but yeah there we go do it like that Hardcore PvP game being a turn off for people. No way they'll love it. <laughs> that might be a bit brutal, but it's only alpha as it could change with time. Personally, I think it makes it more interesting and challenging. He said, Colton, you on that? Doesn't look like it for me. Yeah, I think I think we're still really raw early stages. So let's see. Let's look at it. It looks very... It's Unreal Engine 5. Like, when I played on the first alpha, it looked really crisp, really nice. But from what I've seen of the gameplay in other videos, it did look very clunky and I don't know, but we'll see. But I just want to get you guys thought on the PVP flag. And I, I think that a lot remains to be seen, but let's look. Very much so waiting for, and that is the discussion on PVP. Last week we had, I think it's very really good that the developers are 30 minute get discussion this, uh... on various aspects of combat and what pack day is. And if that's something that you haven't seen yet, I highly recommend that you go and watch that before you come over to this why so to summarize that video he's referring to it just basically went over their ideologies around combat i do think that's an important video i have watched most of it already though if you guys want we could watch that video before watching the dungeon one or watch that one over the dungeon one in fact i think that would be a better watch 
because it's been a while since I've watched that anyway. I think you guys will want to hear about the combat more, but I, I really want to see the PvP one first, and then we'll circle back to that. How's that sound? Yeah, I'm wondering if it's going to be pull, full uh, zones. It's about combat, and yes, the yes. whole last section was about combat, so I want to make sure everyone's Pay attention the to the footage here. There, See if you think you like but the combat. That video is going to be linked. It is action down combat, below, of course. So do check it out. And another thing to note as well, when it comes to all of the gameplay footage that is showing in the background, it's important to remind ourselves that PAX Day is an in development. And when I say in development, I truly mean it is an in development game. It is actively being worked on by the developers, and they are constantly looking for feedback from. Yes. <laughs> so Mob Tech says floaty looking and clunky, but hey, remember Ashes a year ago? That's something a lot of us that follow Ashes of Creation are already used to. This message that he's saying, saying, hey, dude, this is not the final product. It is in development. Things are constantly changing. But yeah. And Tangent says, I think the clunky movement will be perfected. Indeed, indeed. Hmm. All of us, the players, for the direction that we want the game to go in the future. That's like a parry that he did there. It, at the very least. So with that, we have a lot of gameplay footage that's going to be playing in the background. Do make sure you check it out. I tried to include a lot of different footage Dang. that a lot of the community surrounded. was asking questions on leading up until this video. So hopefully that helps settle any debates or maybe start some new ones. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, that animation for today, looks, we are going uh, to be joined back again by Peter and Solka, as well as myself giving the interview on PvP. We have several more interviews to go. Some on Q. crafting, some on exploration. And Is there an actual collision? Looks like it. couple of Fridays leading up until the release of the Wilderness Alpha on the 23rd. So if you have The overall so, movement looks very Day. slow, like that walk speed. And make I don't sure know. that you're signed up for the Alpha. You have until April 15th The animations, to do that. like that two-headed well, swing there, doesn't sure look bad at all. Discord with Ooh, look at that stun animation account that's going to increase Ooh, that was a long cc and just to give you a perspective that's I think a little bad right there six thousand members of the official discord community and we're going to be inviting a hundred thousand players into the wilderness alpha on day one yeah so something to keep in mind this guy is already playing the version of the game that we're about to be playing do keep that in mind and there's going to be over a hundred thousand participants in this next test like he just said so make sure you sign up. Today is the last day to sign up if you haven't. I'm going to say that probably two more times minimum throughout the stream just so you guys are aware. All right, looks better than Mortal Online 2. Dude, was that really hard to do? <laughs> How you doing, Rory? Here? Uh, so, yeah. So We're really going to be analyzing the combat chances, here. That's the best way to do it. Now I'm going to hand it over to Pater as well as Sulka. Both of yeah, these guys 100, are that's a really big passionate test. about the game. They're really knowledgeable about it. And I just really enjoyed getting the opportunity to interview them. So thanks again, Mainframe. What do you guys... So a lot of you guys that's been um, PC gamers for years, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say this. What do you call that program or what they're doing right now to get this top-down aerial view? Um, I would love to see something like this done during Intrepid uh, Ashes of Creation streams. Like, get this alternate POV, because I don't, I mean, it may just be a uh, admin view or something they could uh, use, but um, I forgot the term for it. But I love getting this uh, bird's eye view and have an option for this. For giving me that opportunity. Still no email? You You'll get enjoy. one. Enjoy, and until the next video, I'm Altari the Professional Gamer. All right, take it away with the interview. <laughs> okay, well, I want to... And once again, before we get into this, this is a uh, developer view. This is uh, obviously you see the titles there, uh, the design director and chief product officer. Uh, this is an exclusive interview with them. Um, and before we get into the nitty gritty, now that we're out the intro of the video, once again, please uh, subscribe to uh, Eltari link in the description. Uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, it'll mean a lot to me if you guys sent a lot of love his way from us. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. I wanted to now move back into combat think and um more specifically <laughs> a new you guys see how all of their gear is immediately stripped upon their death like just instantly naked after you die <laughs> like that's interesting like full loop pvp is a uh, i wonder how many people were excited from packs uh four packs with all the building and everything like that they loved in the first test and now that they see this full loot stuff they're like eh, 
I don't know. But it depends on if it's like a certain PvP zone or however that works. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, naked and ashamed. Part of combat, which is PvP. The minor um, population. You know, hmm. We up until this point, Alpha actually got to aim was, your arrow. It, it was all like PvP, New World, and unless you found some way to like get your friends killed by another mob, which isn't really <laughs> PvP anyways. Um, but. Can you explain the PvP system and what we can kind of expect in Alpha 2? Mm. And then I'll have later questions kind of of maybe where we're going with PvP. I love the medieval the first couple, night we'll vibe just of this be game. focusing on Alpha 2. <laughs> yeah. What is PvP in Alpha 2? Um, so, I mean, part of this answer, I mean, this is like a, I guess a multi-part answer that we could talk about different things. Like, part of the answer is just talk about, like, some of the combat improvements or, like, the, the, the steps we're taking for combat in general, which affect both people. Yeah, we'll watch the combat video after uh, this one, weirdly Because enough. we have an, one overarching goal is that we actually don't have, like, two very separate systems where, like, you need objectively, like, completely different gear for PvP than PvE. Of course. What do you guys think about that? You don't need different gear for PvE and PvP. I wonder how PvX this game is. Or like if the PvP only occurs in a specific zone and um, how do I explain it? Like there's not really much PvE mobs in that said zone, maybe. I wonder. I wonder if they're going to answer that. But I know, and I'm obviously speaking from... Theor a theoretical standpoint, but I know like when it comes to Ashes of Creation, I want to build in a way that I'm always prepared for a PvP interaction. Maybe not go full PvP build, because I want to be optimal and have an optimal skill layout and etc. and gear for this trial or this dungeon that I'm about to do. But I want to be, I don't want to go full into my PvE setup, because you never know where that uh, PvX slash PvP scenario is going to occur. That's just me, but yeah. People will like, you know, I like that you don't uh, have to have separate the meta builds for each, kind of, like other games. Of course, there will be like some some things you prefer to wear in PvP and in PvE, but mm -hmm. if you're just geared for one, you should be able to partake in the other without. Yes, uh, that's what I like. Like that's kind what of I like. terrible drawbacks. Uh, the those uh, stuns look brutal. So since Alpha One, we actually we changed kind of how the 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 hot bar for your like special abilities and spells works you like so it there's like a new, now like a new separate hot bar for that apart from your like item bar basically and that is the extension of inventory so we have yeah, like five approach. dedicated slots for like activated abilities or spells and two dedicated slots for like special attacks or special abilities from your weapons hmm. uh, it's actually you know, something i'm gonna bring that back chat the interview earlier I can't do we're the, kind uh... of Eh, reworking all of the back, uh, all of the all of the I weapons pay so that to what each kind of like five oh. dedicated slots for like activated abilities or spells and two dedicated slots for like special attacks or special abilities hmm. from your weapons uh okay. it's actually you know, something we didn't talk about <laughs> why do you whip out the fist earlier. combat we were kind of reworking all of the all of the oh, all of the sword. weapons so that each kind of weapon type like a one-handed oh. axe versus two-handed versus like 100 club versus a spear or whatever that they have different um they have different kind of normal kind of combo attack uh, sort of attack sequences basically with like a different rhythm and different damage type and stuff like that and that we're also giving like all of the weapons like a, a like a special attack uh that goes on onto those slots when you like craft like a much higher you know, like a relic version, basically of a sword, it would just have a much more like unique or powerful version of it. Hmm. But at, at least at the baseline, just if you're ha if you're having a, if you have a sword and a shield, that you can you can do your like attack combos, you can block, you can like deflect attacks, you can do your special like shield bash, and you have like some special attack on the sword that is different than if you're having like a club or whatever. Um, is that a so burning status at least on him? Kind of those kind of basic mechanics are going to change a lot how you fight in uh pvp from oh wow look at that i think that I mean, might be a mage spell <laughs> maybe <laughs> cast a ring of fire um maybe cast a ring of fire behind so yourself at least i mean around of yourself those kind look of basic this. mechanics are going to change who a lot cast this fire right here in, uh, oh i PvP see it it's this guy with the wand before I mean, you see that before. and now you got a barrier <laughs> that you just can't enter that's a pretty cool spell um, from the staff so there. that's most mostly kind of on the combat side, I guess. Uh, the other part of the question is what we talked about earlier. Like, we're introducing, like... I don't, Shadow. There's a new region that you can access from yeah, any of the other 
this is the current uh combat that we can expect to see in the upcoming alpha here uh which is the 23rd if i recall other kind of provinces um and that province that was a cool spell. is our kind of test bed for pvp mechanics and like getting feedback from from the kind of on the combat set i guess uh the other part of the question is what we talked about earlier like we're introducing like there's a new region that the you new can region, access from the any of the set. other other kind of provinces um and that province is our kind of test bed for PvP mechanics and like getting uh, feedback from 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 our players on um, where they would like to see PvP go and like as a baseline for us to kind of communicate what we want to do with it in the future. Uh, that region called Lioness uh, has Linus. is very abundant of like certain like high quality uh, resources that you can gather. Uh. You can still find those resources elsewhere. So I like when games have this approach. Uh, it's nothing, they're not reinventing the wheel here, right? But they're in the alpha, and I don't know if this is something temporarily they're doing in the alpha, and they have this one province dedicated for PvP, so that's the testing ground where you can um, opt in for PvP because you know you're going there and that PvP is active. I wonder if that's their permanent mindset, like there's going to be a certain region. It seems like it is because what they said is, the rarest material is going to be found in this zone where you have no choice but to be flagged. I don't know what their logic is currently for, you know, PvP outside of those flag zones. But uh, we have something, uh, you know, you can't really compare the two systems. But um, in Ashes of Creation, where the best loot is on the open seas, which is a corruption-free zone, meaning that you can PK there or kill other players there to no detriment to your character. So one thing I do like, is that they're rewarding players for not uh for going into this dangerous pvp zone that i think that's something that games need to always have is incentive to pvp um that that's big like having the rarest materials in that zone that's big but it just has like some concentrated spots where you can where it's very lucrative to go and yes. actually gather them so alpha access is obtainable if you look on my community post rts there's a link in the pinned comment on how to sign up for the alpha. So just look at my current community post and it's not late. Today is the last day to sign up. Are they doing NDA crap? Uh, no, no. Um, this is no NDA. You can stream it. It's uh, open. If you get in, you get in. It's 100,000 people. So I, I feel like everyone that wants to get in should get in. So yeah. But yeah, make sure you guys signed up for it. Um, I have my friend code. Um, I'm already in it, so I don't, I mean, it's not like I get anything for it, but if you use my, if you want to use my friend code to sign up, you can do that. It's, uh, tagged in that post, I'm pretty sure. And, uh, yeah, uh, I would like to group with a lot of you during this alpha test, build a village together, test things together. I think that'll be fun. I think that'll be fun. A lot of us just get together and like, cause you, there's a lot of building. I don't know if you played the last alpha test, but there's a lot of building and, uh, survival mechanics and it will be really cool to make a community. And it can also work like as a short legit player the built town. So, like, depending on where you are, oh, so it might there, be there you go. There's PVE. To travel through Lioness to get to a different province than if you take like a normal route. Um, so it's set up in a way where nobody has to do PvP. You can you can progress and do everything in the game without have, needing to do PvP. But it has some advantages that you can kind of uh, risk your life and gear for. Because it is very hardcore, like it's full yeah. loot. It's full loot uh, in that region. In in regards to that, that when you say full loot, that means full everything loot. that a player has in their inventory, everything that they have equipped, is all completely lootable. In it's all completely list. lootable. Yeah. All lootable. Nice. <laughs> I'd kill one player and head on so, back, depending on what they basically had. want to start from like a very hardcore like stage, and then <laughs> mm -hmm. like start introducing more ways for people to kind of, yeah. See, I imagine it's going to start off with this full loop, but they're going to slowly get away from that. That That's my theory. A lot of games backtrack these days. Didn't New World start off as some survival full loop kind of thing, and then they turn it to an MMO last second? I'm not saying that's what's happening or going to happen with PAX, because they already established themselves as an MMO. Um, I, I, I don't know. My perception is always like survival meets MMO is what PAX Day seems to be going for. Uh, and I use that roughly. Uh, I my guess is that they'll allow you to have some special item that you can craft, and maybe it's hard to obtain, but you can uh have an item that if you die with this equipped, you only drop fifty percent of your loot, or maybe they take it down to about a seventy five percent thing. 
if they stick to this uh, full loot PvP zone, I would be surprised and impressed. Um, that's just my take. I would be very surprised and impressed. I I, I don't know. Yeah. So it's, yeah. So the so the future vision of the PvP is going to be that we do want to like in the future Albion, add yeah. more gameplay that will enable people to participate in the PvP. If you don't even like, if you don't want to participate in the most hardcore of the experiences. Um, so PvP probably is going to be expanded to some of the other areas of the world. Oh, okay. And there's going to be like ways in which you can kind of like participate in the effort of your clan, like some of the clan mates part, like doing PvP, um, hmm. even as a casual player. So but, okay. like, if you want, something, yeah. if, if, if you want to, yeah. So we do want to still like regain the, or like retain the ability for players to control whether they want to participate in PvP or not. So that's big. That is something big. They kind of alluded to this earlier, but he kind of just doubled down on it. And this is important because this, uh, especially at this development stage, it's important to get a developer's um, ideology, for lack of a better word, like their mindset, their approach, their perspective on how they want to build out this game. They are very adamant so far that the, you are not going to PvP if you don't want to pvp you're going to know when you're entering a zone that's a pvp area and furthermore they making sure that you know that it's optional like you and they're making sure that you know that it's possible to progress through the game get the max level whatever the case may be um without having to pvp and i think that's interesting that's very interesting that's not what we're seeing with like uh ashes of creation of course um I think a lot of players will like that. I think a lot of players will like that, honestly. Um, yes, yes. Thank you for hitting the like button, guys. Appreciate that. Proximity voice chat. Dude, we need proximity voice chat. Um, I never played Mortal Online 2, but I watch a lot of it. And what proximity chat does for that game is hilarious and entertaining and a lot of players use it like uh, new world has proximity chat but no one really uses it productively um i think when games can foster community where proximity chat is utilized is big i don't know if this game has that or how they'll be uh utilizing that i'm trying to think back to the last alpha test i can't recall using voice chat um but yeah i don't know I don't know. That's a good question, though. I would. I, I think it'll be really immersive. Honestly, I know some people say proximity chat's not immersive. You got somebody blasting random music, but as long as it's like a push to talk thing and players use it properly, I'd like to see that impact. Say personally, because we know um, if you look at MMO places overall, like the there's a small group of people who think like PvP is the best in the world and like they yeah, enjoy that the most. That we want to cater for these people. Yeah. Simultaneously, there's a, like, a much larger group of people who kind of like. Want to dabble in PvP if they yes. feel comfortable about the mm -hmm. level of the that's most people. That they do, and and we the the PvP that we have in the alpha doesn't cater. For they want to opt in for it because the as Peter said, it's very hardcore as it is now, um, and mm. that's the like the the part of the PvP that we're going to be putting into the game later once we've made sure that the core PvP system actually works, and and so the so that's not in alpha. Um, We'll, oh, okay. We'll start to work on that once we start getting meaningful feedback. Okay, so this alpha won't be that way, but that's their so long term thing. <clears throat> that's a cool cloak like in the value background. Proposition for players is they're going full into loop, man. Lioness. Um, you know, when you're in I like PvE, this bird's eye view of the gameplay. Yeah. Really if you get cool. Get killed by the boss at the end of the dungeon. You can still at least try to recover <laughs> your gear, right? But yep. in Lioness, it's not that at all wait a minute chat another player can we bring that gone, back right i'm sorry oh, you know, i know there's the key to just bring back you know hit left on the keypad but for some reason in google chrome that button's not working for me i don't know if it's something i'm doing wrong or what but here can we actually turn up the quality on this um i don't know if it's something i'm doing but it's not doing that so i, I keep having to use the mouse apologies for that but i don't think this is a developer view I almost want to say that we were just looking at the POV of that player that we saw just get off the rock. Try and this is just like a first person gear, view that right? you have. But yep. in Lioness, it's... Yeah, I want to say it was this guy. I could be wrong, though. It, There's some of those angles that look like gone, it had to be developer right? view, but I don't know. Well, it depends on that player. They might choose yeah. to... Oh, so here's like, the looting right yeah, here. Not take it all. Or, yeah, not take it all. So then, in terms of that, what is the... What's the value for players to Look really incentivize them going to this region right now? Like, 
where's the it. the benefit to risking it all essentially or is it more so just yeah it needs to be like, risk and reward i need to go and flex reward on my peers risk. so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to the so, pvp zone yes yeah, so, so as peter said the there's a bunch of resources there that are like um there's a couple that it's only available in the in the pvp area so you can you literally can't get it from elsewhere and um in terms of the the iron economy is obviously very important for pv ears iron. and lioness is a source for pure iron so manufacturing anything out of iron is a lot more effective if you get your hands on that because it allows you to skip a lot of the three finding processes oh um, so for any crafter like actually like being able to do a run there like to pick up the pure iron like it, it should be a fast the way night to get some of the high-end gear so i know a lot of that's players big are... so if you go to pv if you don't do the pvp zone your crafting process seems to be a lot more tedious. How you doing, Viral? Yes, PvP in this version. It looks like PvP is huge in this version. Almost a focus point, if you will. Um, the PvP is going to be a little bit different. It's a work in progress, obviously, and their approach is going to be different. Like uh, We were just talking about how PvP is going to be optional long-term, but in this alpha test, it's looking like there's going to be a lot of PvP. Um, but yeah, it's he said that it basically sounds like uh crafting and refining is going to be a lot more tedious if you take a pure pve route like you're going to have to refine this and then get materials for this and refine that whereas you can just go i don't know skip the stage three for a rough example and pick up the iron straight up if you get it from the pvp zone rather than having to upgrade it from tier one or whatever case can be if that makes sense rough rough example but you guys get what i'm saying i really really like that it doesn't lock the pve player out but it says hey if you want to take less risk you can get the same reward but it's going to take you a little bit longer it's going to be a little bit more effort and time dedication on your part what you guys think about that i don't think that's such a bad approach i like it you're not gatekeeping per se another uh group of players but you're also incentivizing uh risk and reward if you will so Okay. Okay. I, I like that. I want to test out the PvP. Oh no, it's definitely developer view in the game, <laughs> and this might be a little bit more of a difficult question to answer because uh, it's presuming uh, players' actions. But there are really four entry points to Lioness, right? What does the team over at Mainframe? think about, about how ganking. players are going to interact and you know i already know a lot of current Camp in the alpha entrances. testers have chosen to focus really on the areas near i knew it i knew that's where he was going with it are are there any plans to try and balance that out in the world in the future or are you more so looking for feedback on how that kind of plays out right now because i could i could picture a lot of players just being mm -hmm. like all right this is the closest point i can get to <laughs> So I, I think that's a good question. Uh, when it comes to entrances, you have people camping the entrance or to spawn into the world. The way I would suggest uh, fixing that is a 30 second mm, up to a minute time frame. When you walk into this specific zone where PvP flagging is on, you cannot take damage or be attacked by PvP players. Also, you can't gather in that minute as well. So it's not like you can just keep, you know, skipping in, skipping out. I that's what I would do. I think that would be a good solution. It's like a, uh, 30 seconds to a minute where you can't be attacked, but you also can't loot anything. So you don't get the benefit of abusing the free zone. That's how Albion works. That that That's how I would do it. Um, and as far as camping the exit, the exit rather than the entry, as far as those players go, I guess that's just a risk you uh, undertake uh, as players camping the exit. And you get killed right before you get out. I don't know. That that sounds annoying, but I mean, I, I I don't think there's really much you can do on that front. You can help people that's entering, but I don't know how much you can help people that's exiting. And four entrances, if it was like seven entrances, maybe that'll be less common. You choose the right one or a seldom known about one, but yeah, let's see what their response or to that uh inquiry is. Yeah, so we're we're fully expecting that the again, like the, this is very hardcore, so there's be plenty of ganking um to get access to the some of the most valuable resources. Like it, it is going to be beneficial to actually like delve a bit deeper into the area. And the magic um, doesn't look horrible yeah, like, at it, all. It, it's it looks very, really good. very risky as it is. I don't know about now. the melee so, combat. Like, please be aware that the risk reward threshold is considerably high in in this area of the world mm. 
Cool. Um, and yeah, so yeah, we're, we hope to get the feedback. Awesome. Terrain, yes. Cool. And going more on to oh, just he's like blocking the, the arrows. PvP and all of that right now as well. He's not taking damage to block. That's cool. Does exist a lot of different ranged combat options mm -hmm. in game right now. Where do you see the balance coming in in PvP? Great for question, Atari. Ranged combat because as it stands right now, there's not really that many options for closing distance, and yeah, you know, you really can only move as fast as you can sprint. Um, yeah. So if they... right. Yep. Before they answer that, let me echo his thoughts just from the gameplay i'm watching right now um i'm excited to play it it does look slow and clunky and it looks like just like most not most mmos just like some mmos where range combat reigns supreme and that's where you um that's the issue you're always going to run across when you have default slow player movement new world is the biggest offender of this right where your combat is like a little bit slower or your player, your base player movement speed is slower. Um, I would like to see maybe if you're in light armor, your character sprint is higher. Um, but like right now, this situation, I love that this is the background footage that's playing because you have three guys with a bow just pew, pew, you know. Someone just mentioned how terrain's going to be a big deal. This guy up on this rock just aiming arrows down at you. What is the drawback for the range? Like, how is he ever going to close the gap? He's sitting there. Luckily, the shield mitigates full damage, it looks like. Um, I think they have it already implemented. Let's watch the background footage to see if every time an arrow hits his shield, it's taken from that stamina bar. Um, and thank you for having a stamina bar already. I'm still waiting for uh, Intrepid to get theirs in there. But um, <clears throat> there obviously is an active block. And right now, and I know he's outnumbered. Outnumbered PvP is not easy. But... Even if that was one guy with an arrow or just two, I don't know what you do in this scenario just based off what I've seen so far with this combat and how slow it is and everything like that. Let's keep Both watching. If a player can outrun you, then they can just keep hurting you. Is there any ideas for balancing that or how that will work in the future? Um, yeah, related to this also, I had one. there's one caveat to when I was talking about the kind of PvP versus PvE gear. Right now, there are a few like hard crowd control abilities in the game, like styles CCs. that you can, uh, can access to. And... We haven't yet like added um, sort of mitigation chance to these status effects. We only have a mitigation for damage, uh, and until we do like the the long duration crowd control effects, like mesmerizes and stuff like that, mm -hmm. actually don't or should not work in PvP because they would be just completely overpowering. <laughs> um, but you, there are still like shield bashes where you can like stun in PvP and stuff like that, uh, which might. They had to let him close the gap there. I don't know if you guys paid attention to that. They just stopped firing because he had no hope of getting over there safely at all from what I saw. I could be wrong. Um, so what they just answered, he's still talking, but just wanted to kind of jump in here. You would need certain gear or spells to counter the range. I'm using this loosely. Meta, it looks like. Hmm. I don't know. I would like to see. Uh, I don't think they have dodge roll implemented yet, but I know that's part of their long term plans, which we'll kind of get wind of in the combat video. But I don't know. That's a very good concern that he brought up because, yeah, this is looking very range friendly. And uh, if this is what we're going to get during the alpha, I'll definitely try to find me a bow as soon as possible. I wonder if I got uh, craft each arrow or how that works. Uh, swing a bot. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. ESO, if you guys do not know. So uh, just to kind of little small intermission here. Uh, the Elder Scrolls Online has a new chapter coming. And with all chapters in DLC, they have a preview, uh, a PTS server, a public test server. And they accidentally made it so that your character and all your gold and currency from the test server, which is in the millions, uh, it's actually got transferred to the live server. And so the developers actually panicked and took the server down. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. I think it's still down, but, uh, yeah, that's what's happening over there. But yeah, based off what I'm seeing right now, I'm not liking the, uh, lack of utility against range combat. I don't know. I could be looking too much into it, but we'll see. Help a little bit with, but of course you need to close the gap to actually stun people. When it comes to the ranged, uh, balancing in general. I mean the bow. Um, uh, the bow is, of course, like quite skill based. You could like you could block or sidestep like arrows that are incoming. Uh, yeah. 
So if you manage your stamina better than than the enemy that you're trying to chase down, or if you have better foods, for instance, to have much better like stamina, you there shouldn't be any reason why you wouldn't be able to like catch up with them and, and okay and, and catch them kind of. Can I see an example of that? Um, but then there's like at least one or two like pretty powerful. So there's like zigzag like this. Okay. To I see what well. you're saying. Okay. See when you look at uh, it so that yeah, way, it doesn't look too bad. Balance that better probably before alpha two, but at least based on feedback. Okay. Oh dang! And then I mean, based off that clip that right there, never the mind. Current <laughs> iteration of PvP, but yeah, the new where combat stuff. Do you see we're PvP looking at PvP stuff going in the future? I know we previously talked about how the areas where players can kind of get involved. Here, I tell you what, Eltari, if you don't mind, I'm gonna get a little closer to you, pal. <laughs> how you doing? What's up? Um, I think I'm in his personal space, but it's fine. Uh, I wanted to move so that you guys can see uh, how the uh, skill bar and all that looks. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, have a good night, Nirvani. Just oh, 3 a.m. Oh my goodness. Have a good night. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, it looks like they're going for realism for sure, like medieval vibes. It obviously has magic and stuff like that, but yeah, definitely a lot of realism. It looks like. In PvP, will be expanding. But where is kind of your future vision of PvP as a whole going mm. towards? And what can we expect to see in, in future versions of the game as like early access is coming? The mage stuff that. looks impressive. How much should we... So the so so I could, just to set like timing wise to set the expectations, the there's a lot of systems that we need to make sure that they're better before we get to like expand significantly to PvP. So uh please don't expect any the, the bigger PvP stuff to land like very soon. That's not gonna happen. Um so the uh, I guess the way to maybe talk about the PvP like the future is gonna be um right now like if you go into the pvp like the or lioness you're probably going to be going in a like small group and it's going to be yeah. like fun that you can i'm have zergen your clan. i'm There's zergen no the alpha context to what you're doing the the features that we do want to start adding in this is a full this is full loop pvp there's no way i'm not zergen this alpha you ain't taking my stuff <laughs> i need y'all to zerg with me we are going in there deep there is no risk. We are minimizing risk. Let's say that. Low fantasy is best in your opinion. Yeah, I feel that. Yes, chivalry combat. Yeah, I can, I, I can see that. I can see that. It's yes. very, it's it's work in progress, of course, but it's very slow and clunky looking. But I got a feeling it's, I, I got they're gonna keep. I got a feeling they're gonna keep improving it, and maybe it feels different when we get our hands on it. The range combat doesn't look that bad to me. I'll say that. Um, like once where there's a greater social context to all the pvp so you actually do want to do something purposeful mm. as a clan and you might actually want to like have multiple clans to get to join together i love these angles they're using like in an even bigger group so instead of being like a small scale skirmish gameplay thing actually it's going to be expanding i'm sorry into... chat i know i'm sounding like a broken record but i really love how they're showcasing uh their footage first off once again shout out to uh Atari. Uh, thank you for letting us uh, review this. Second of all, second of all, I'd like to give a shout out to Mainframe for using their content creators to showcase their game. Uh, I think this is really big. They're not even releasing this these videos on their YouTube channel. These videos are on Eltari's channel, like literally. They're like I checked their YouTube, and the last video was like four months ago for something with Nvidia. Like this, I really like what they're doing. Third of all, I would like to say I love this uh, director cam that they're using. It looks really cinematic. You know, you have your cinematic trailers for MMOs and everything like that. But getting this bird's eye view, this non-player controlled view, um, don't get me wrong. I prefer to see real gameplay from the point of view that I would be playing, right? But yes, the in-engine recording tools, that's what I was looking for. The in-engine recording tool slash developer view. I love that perspective. Um, it's a good way to show like background footage. Now, like when it comes to things like Ashes of Creation, where we're trying to see this game that we're going to play in a couple of months. Yes, I want to see how things look for the player, et cetera, et cetera. But occasionally, maybe for non-showcases and stuff like that, I would love to see this. This is very cinematic and i love these little uh it's like a great for teaser footage or immersion i really really think it adds that extra touch to the uh background footage here if you will
something that you actually like might Usually have. Usually don't see the still trailers. Like, a whole like multiple heartlands worth of players be doing something together that they yeah. should ideally feel is very meaningful. And given that this is PvP, they're in conflict with some other group that that might be even living on another province. <laughs> Tangent says, "Looks like Pax might be the side piece. Don't tell Ashes." <laughs> Um, RTS says, uh, looks like they want one hand and shield to be a strong build. Really like seeing that. Yes, sir. I love me some sword and shield tank vibes blocking. Yes. Yeah. yeah I mean, and without necessarily mentioning any kind of detailed kind of first steps, like the, just kind I of love thematically to think about like how, where, where it would be going is exactly kind of, um, kind of what Soka is saying. And, and that would involve also, also like positions of power that people get put into Ooh. like knights and, and barons and kind of uh look at this background like footage. a feudal structure that kind of AOE where, cleave. I love to see it. these entities are kind of working together and against each other uh for greater benefits that can be something else i really like seeing and i i may be posting an ashes of, i might post a video tomorrow i got a video on ashes of creation coming tomorrow uh something that i really love seeing uh especially for ashes of creation being a tab target game is that your melee hits have AOE cleave. This is something you guys heard me speak on before, but I'll just say it again. I love when your basic attacks, like your swings of your melee weapon, have true hitboxes. That is a really, really big deal to me. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but that's a huge difference maker. I love the realism in that. Like uh, the Elder Scrolls Online, which I main, like that's not something that exists. And so, um, like, it's an action combat game, but that's not a thing that they have. Like, even if it looks like your sword hit this other person, if that's not the person you weren't tar you were targeting, then it just doesn't happen. Uh, Ashes of Creation showed this off in, first in their melee showcase uh, last two years ago, actually. Oh, my goodness. It's been a while. Uh, and you got to see this a lot in the recent fighter showcase. Um, and that's a tab target game that has that. So that's very impressive, right? Uh, this is an action combat game, so I expected it, but it's good that they have this background footage here to prove it, like just to like really confirm that hey, this is how huge the great sword is. It has a true hitbox, and I really think that's uh just that one of those little extra details that's important. Yeah, especially for when you get a group and, of mobs. And all of this you. again, as we like, as with all the gameplay features, um, agreed, Fuppa. Like This needs to be something that is controlled by the players that this is something you as a player choose to do in your clan and like you're in control over how the structure works um, yep. we're not going to be making a a system that has rigid rules for how people are appointed or like how how the structures come about it, this needs to be something that is truly social and like the, the player population so on the world actually gets to have like full oh, one stun and you're dead oh my gosh in that in that world Bring that back. And I guess kind of what people have pointed Bro, like he's going to eat one stun and never get this CC broke no matter how much damage he takes. Look at this. Totally social and like the, the player population on the world. Look at that. His whole health bar is gone from that one stun. This place out for them. In <laughs> That's the, not going to feel good. Well, That's not going to feel good. I guess good. kind of one final, final question. Um, when it comes to PvP, a lot of uh times the question comes in how does the balance of the number of players of one clan get balanced with the number of players of another clan in other words you know if there's some really big streamer like Zer you know, Asmongold or something like that who comes in and he has a hundred people following him around uh is there eventually a point where that how is the team planning on balancing things like that in its current iteration? Is there any kind of balance for that? Uh, just complete overpowering in numbers? Or is that something that we should look for more towards in the future? So, and I like doing this. I like the questions that Altari is asking. And I like pausing in between to kind of guess what the developers will say or what I think the answer or the situation is. My guess is with the way this game looks structured and the way the combat looks is that there's probably not a way to do anything about that, uh, especially if you got like a certain flagging system where you can't hit members of your guild or whatever, I imagine. I don't see what stops like, I mean, we haven't seen all the spells, but you would need specific mechanics or spell types. Um, one thing I like seeing in game is Zerg busting skills uh, or sets, sets that like, you know, or skills that um, it does X amount of damage, 
but this is multiplied by 10% for every person caught in that AOE. And that punishes people that are stacking or zerging, if you will. I think uh, if you do it right, those are really good mechanics to counter uh, to counter um, instances of zerging. But I wonder what the developers are going to say in response to that. I mean, that's something... So this is not something that... They're like Lioness right is, is a very simple kind of implementation of this. Okay. Uh, and it does not attempt to trust any of the, any of these things, and it actually shouldn't try to trust any of these things. Uh, Linus is just a very very dangerous place where people are not under the protection of the protection of the of their deity, uh, and th you know they can engage in each other in combat. So if there's like a hundred people that are like roaming lioness, uh, then that's there's a hundred people very, roaming lioness, and there are hundred yeah. people roaming lioness. And it's a very, <laughs> Okay, I didn't see that response coming. He just said, hey, it sounds like they got more people than you. He's like, uh, his answer was basically, well, sounds like you're SOL. Like, what do you want me to do? Sounds like you need more friends. <laughs> sounds like you need more friends if you want to be safe. Hey, I, I get it. I, re I respect it. Aswin Gold's going to have a good time. He's going to have a good time. <laughs> Very dangerous place to be at right now. Yeah, uh, okay. I but it, we, to those we don't see that as a big problem for Lioness in its current implementation either because... Yes, even though there are like the, you know, it's not going to stop people from being able to progress into what they want to do because the resources that, yes, they have are pretty lucrative there. You can still find them as well. And a lot of people are going to be farming them outside of Lioness anyway, because that's what they opt to do. Mm. Um, for like future stuff that we were kind of alluding to Great with like uh, these positions of power and like clans fighting to like, you know, working together uh, for like some greater goals. Uh, the, I mean, the problem you mentioned is, is like a very valid problem, especially for any kind of like structured PvP fight where like a zone can only have a certain number of people on either side. Mm. Uh, so that is like one of the big considerations that go into making a, any any kind of like structured PvP uh, situations in the game. Yeah. But for any of the open world stuff like Lioness or any kind of open world skirmishes or whatever that... Uh, that will come later uh they would not analyzing the background footage here it looks like they're baiting each other so like he has his great sword in defensive stance like well blocking and he one thing that you can do now is cancel your animations in the game and i don't mean like necessarily animation cancel a skill but like he swings he starts to swing his great sword and he cancels it back into block Maybe trying to bait out the other player. Um, that looks like what the mind game was uh, was that was going on in the background. Like uh, they're just practicing. Like, okay, how far can I charge this great sword hit before I can cancel it? Um, I can imagine there being a mind game uh, with that. So far, if I had to go ahead and give my summary of combat, I would like to see more mage gameplay. But so far, right now, it's definitely early progress, uh, early work in progress kind of stuff. Um, if I had to take a guess, it's gonna feel really clunky. Um, but it's definitely gonna be a lot better than what we had in the first alpha test, which that was nowhere near the point of that test. So obviously, you know, you can't really judge it on that. But this looks workable. It's definitely something worth testing. And I don't know, it looks good to me. I think it's something worth testing. It'll be a placeholder, but you can kind of see the their approach, I'd say. Um, one thing that I am seeing right now that I hope they implement soon is either A, the concept of CC break, <laughs> or like maybe you spend a portion of your stamina. Like if you have at least 50% of your stamina, you can spend that on a CC break. So right now, uh, our character here has 108 max stamina. That's the amount of stamina he has after the food he's consumed, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe you implement a system to where it costs 50 stam to CC break, and maybe the cost of said CC break de depends on the type of armor class that you're wearing. If you're wearing heavy armor, maybe it only costs you 30 stam to CC break. If you're wearing medium, it's 50 um, or maybe you go the other direction. Yeah, yeah, you keep, you're probably going that direction. Maybe for light armor users, it costs 60 to CC break, you know? And you use the stamina bar to sprint, you use it to block and dodge. So you're constantly uh, worrying about your stamina management, and it adds the second mind game to your combat. 
right now, and maybe that's their plans. Maybe they've already thought that. I don't know. But right now, this stun that I'm seeing, because I'm listening to developers, don't get me wrong, but I'm really analyzing the footage in the background because this is what we're about to get in a couple of days, right? Right now, that stun looks absolutely brutal. And not being hyperbolic, I feel like it's about four to five seconds of you just getting wailed on. And it doesn't have like a, like a sleep mechanic like you see in some games, like once you take your next hit. So you stun your opponent and you line up a charged attack because you know they can't move you. You want to do your strongest attack or spell. Right now, you're stunned and someone can do a whole combo on you. And I think we saw earlier in the video where he, he got stunned around, a, somebody got stunned around a group of people and it's just three people taking out their whole health bar instantly. So CC mechanics is definitely something that uh, is gonna be frustrating. I can go ahead and already tell you that when you're on the receiving end, no one likes being stun locked. So that's gonna be very interesting to see if uh, they implement a CC break. Um, what do you guys think about that? You hope to get into the next PAX day test. Um, did you sign up previously? They they have a hundred thousand for this upcoming test, so I feel like most people that want to get in are going to get in. Especially if you signed up previously but didn't get in the last one, you should get in. Um, just catching up here. Uh, how you doing, Reaper? Welcome on in. So. Nemesis says, okay, but what is their current stance on terms of monetization method? Are they still going to stick to their current plan? Or are they going to change it? That remains to be seen. I know when they talked about their last uh, monetization method, they initially came out saying something like a wow token. That was not received very well from what I recall. Uh, so I wonder if they're constantly reapproaching this. I wouldn't mind seeing a, I'm, I'm the kind of person, I do not care about no cosmetic cash, uh, cash, uh, ugh, cash up. Um, I think that'll be fine. It uh, and this seems like the kind of game. It depends on if they want to do a monthly subscription. They could probably get away. And I'm not saying this is the right way to do things or what I want, but if they were to do like a cheap box cost, like twenty dollars, and then a ten, fifteen dollar month subscription, or if they want to do just box costs and a cash shop, whatever. As long as you don't do too much of each kind of monetization, you know. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing a cosmetic uh, cash shop have a bunch of night themed armor. Sell some dyes for your armor. You know, maybe some dyes are earnable in world, but you know, if you want this armor to have like a nice glowing gold, you got to get that from the cash shop. I don't know. I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that's what I want. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I take anything like that over something that maybe like a wow token. Um, Penum says, hope all you want. They need to work on the stability to allow for better building, but biggest issues to pay to win concerns. Oh, for sure. For sure. It's, um, it wasn't the best last I heard <laughs> cosmetic away. If pay for win advantage, then yeah, yeah. I don't like, uh, I don't really like pay to win. Yeah. Kids ruining my game. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I'm not a, I'm one. I'm, I do not mind because cosmetics, I love cosmetics. I love buying uh, cosmetics in game when they're allowed. Um, I have no shame in saying that. I'm not saying I, I hate when I got to pay a box cost subscription and then still got to pay for cosmetics. My issue is now just hear, hear, hear my whole take. My thing is I hate when the cosmetics and the cash shop vastly i mean vastly outshine that what is earnable in game that's when i have a problem when i can't earn any cool cosmetics like the cosmetics i earn in game looks like this right but the thing in the cash shop has a freaking cape you got a permanent sparkle glow around you you get this red aura your sword is made of diamonds and it has a cool sound every time you swing it but the thing you earn in game is just a generic steel iron knight sword like that's that's horrible that is horrible no one likes that i want most cosmetics if not all if you want to do it that way to be earnable a lot of people like that uh, old school MMR, MMO RPG mentality where your cosmetics were earnable. I think there's a way to do both. Um, the MMO that most of us here in chat follows, Ashes of Creation, I think it's doing it great. Uh, we saw that Tower of Carfin armor recently. Was that thing not amazing? Uh, the armor from Oaken Bane Keep, was that not amazing? Like, they have some really good in-game looking armor. And, of course, they have the pre-order cosmetics. We've seen those look good. But, I mean, making cosmetics look good isn't a crazy accomplishment to me. Especially when it's paid cosmetics. You expect those to look good and be enticing. But you need to accompany that with earnable in-game cosmetics looking great. 
Um, something I didn't always run into with the Elder Scrolls Online. It's like all the cool stuff. Like came, you had some cool end game armor, but the stuff in the cash shop, bro, the mounts and the armor in the cash shop of the Elder Scrolls Online, it's like a whole different game. You look a whole different level of cool. Uh, Penum says no one has problem with cosmetics, even if they look spectacular. It's not as bad as buying gold or other stuff. No, Penum, I see a lot of dude. A lot of people hate that cosmetics exist in game because the and the mindset. And I'm not saying they're horribly wrong or anything, but their mindset is that you're making me pay for this. You could have easily made this cosmetic drop off something in game, and now you're taking money from me because you chose not to make this armor drop from a boss. Is their argument. Um, a lot of people just hate any kind of monetization. Like it's um yeah, and the cosmetics lead the FOMO. Yeah, yes. So there's a lot of art. There's actually a lot of people and a lot of arguments against cosmetics. Um, but yeah, this is a good conversation. Um, yeah, the Carfin armor is amazing, dude. Yeah, Mali Mali predatory. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. But yeah, it's um. <sighs> I just hate gold buying. Oh, yeah, dude. Now, that's when we start talking about pay to win and uh, RMT. That's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. All right. So let's finish this one out. Not an attempt to address this, I think. Cool. And then in terms of YNS as well, it's a very much so smaller map too, right? Than pay attention to this. Hold up. Hold up, chat. Hold up. Maps. What's kind of the thought uh, behind making this as well? Watch this. It your spells a lot of your spells are tied to gear that you obtain right so you can find a special helmet that allows you to cast a cleanse or a heal you can find a special staff that that allows you to do that fire circle around yourself that we saw earlier there's going to be a special uh shoulder piece that lets you um do some sort of uh arrow rain of arrows or whatever you etc etc a lot of the spells seem to be tied to gear. So what you saw here in the, the background, look at this. He died. He didn't just lose his gear, dude. He didn't just lose his gear. He lost his spells and his combat effectiveness. Look at this. Remove spell, divine remedy. Remove spell, soothing melody. Remove spell, radiant mend. He lost a couple of heals, it looks like. Remove spell, fire bolt. That's big. That's big. You die in a PvP zone and literally someone else can pick up your spells. That's very brutal. Yeah. It's really brutal. The combat looks pretty wonky. Yeah, it, it does look very wonky indeed. Ashes, yes. Ashes has cosmetics. Yes, they will have a cosmetic uh, cash shop. Yeah, so that's going to be very it's brutal, man. A very much so smaller <laughs> map too, right? Than what we're used to in the other maps. What's kind of the thought uh, behind making it that small is it really just to push kind of player interaction in that way or what was that question is youtube paying me and what way or you mean like packs or hey thank you george for thank you for subscribing appreciate you but there's some other thoughts in that it is but it, i mean if it's even it's smaller like the heartlands and the, like the heartland provinces are very very large and it's like you don't have you don't have any mounts so it's actually it is still like fairly time consuming to like are they gonna you know, have mounts eventually I, but i mean we're open to feedback for it but i, I feel like lioness is still vast enough where traversing it and finding certain spots for and ads and stuff is, yes this you know this it's effort <laughs> yeah, yeah that, i mean the if we had made it the same size of the other provinces then then why would they make the de why would the devs make the ability to steal other players spells <clears throat> that's stupid yeah so the spells like i was just saying is tied to the gear so the the thing is i think they're just really leaning into the risk of this pvp area so this this is a specific area that you're gonna have to go into there's gonna be pvp areas so this is not like you're running around and some player kills you and steals your spells you kind of have to opt into this and understand the risk that comes with that so in this pvp area the best materials are gonna be uh yeah yeah it's full loot it's full loot uh, looking forward to PAX Day. Thanks for covering us while waiting for Ashes. Oh, for sure, dude. For sure. Thank you. Um, I think, uh, as we were mentioning earlier, the materials in this 
area is going to really circumvent a lot of the tedious grind. But you don't have to come in this area to progress and get that same material, it seems like. It seems like coming to this area and these materials will allow you a better time, like like maybe even some shortcuts. But you don't have to come in this area that subjects you to dropping your gear. Um, hopefully there's like duels and stuff like that. Yep, I was just about to address that, Zyron. Uh, Zyron, you asked that at the perfect time. He says, is the PvP area like Cyrodiil from ESO? Well, I'm hoping that we get an area like that. I'm hoping that there is a way to duel or group duel to where you can PvP and practice without dropping everything, literally every time you want to PvP, because that does sound annoying. Hopefully there's like, uh, like I said, maybe a little coliseum in town where you can do, and I hate using this term, but consensual PvP, uh, stuff like that. I hope that there isn't uh no i hope that there's not only pve until you're ready to go full loop pvp and i hope there's things like guild wars where you see a player outside of these zones and you two can fight each other but you don't drop all your gear because with your spells and stuff being tied to your gear that's pretty insane man that that, that that's pretty insane uh i don't think a lot of people will like that like dropping everything dude that's crazy i know it's existed before like uh we keep talking about albion online but dude i don't know can someone educate me on albion online i know you dropped your gear and stuff you didn't drop your class skills and your spells because you need those spells to earn more gear per se if you, does that make sense like if you die you're going to spawn with no weapon or anything like that these spells make it easier for you to acquire more things, acquire more spells. And so I feel like when you die, you're going to get into this loop. Now, obviously, you don't bring everything with you to this PvP zone, right? You want to keep a sword and shield in the bank for, or if you die. You don't want to bring everything with you and just drop it all. Um, you'd prefer if the devs make the skills separate for armor? Dude, I'm 100% with you. I'm 100% with you. I'm on your side there for sure. Get back to the good old right Ultima Online days, uh, but I, but maybe that's the hardcore risk they want. They uh, it seems like they're pretty invested in having the skills tied to the armor, and we're gonna get more details on that in the video that we watch after this one here shortly. It depends on how hard it is to find or make new gear. Rust is full loot and has it's no big deal because you just make new gear. Yeah. Um. Let, let, let's finish this one out. It would be huge. So imagine trying to find yeah. another PvP or in a like land area that is like hundred square kilometers. So you just like would be very frustrated <laughs> trying to find yeah. anybody in that area. So yeah, if you yeah. make the area big enough. I yeah, the, the size of the Heartland provinces are, are. The arrow aiming doesn't look very too hard, hard because we, it looks like be as long as it's of in that circle, facilitate the arrow like will auto home and, and the kind of trade routes. You, see, you guys see that with the arrow? So the size there like matters and makes that more meaningful. Yeah, definitely. That's very cool. generous. Let, that's very generous. All right. Well, thank you all. Here, let for me go back to that the really time to quick. answer all of these questions. I know. So, are 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 very large because we they need to be able. To yeah. So, this isn't as action intensive as New World. For those of you guys that know, I know a lot of people do not like the range combat in that because you have to have like FPS shooter aim and then some. Like, you have to truly hit that on the mark. This game, it's a little bit more generous where it's saying, hey, your opponent just needs to be somewhere in this circle, and then um, you'll hit your target, right? And obviously, that circle is going to encompass more of the character the closer you are, obviously. Uh, so what do you guys think about that? I think this is perfect. I don't think a lot of people liked... Uh, I know some people did, of course, because it's more skillful, right? But I think this is generous, and it could be a good thing just having to hit in the general vicinity of a player because i mean you could still miss you know a player's sprinting weaving from side to side i could still i could still see archers missing but i i think this is a cool little uh reticle based thing uh, i think it's pretty good so kind of being very facilitated like yeah. villages and buildings and the kind of trade routes yeah, happening have and a bunch of uh, so spares the size there like but that was that one. Uh, once again, while we have this small intermission, uh, this video is from El Tari. Make sure you guys go subscribe to him. Uh, really good content. Really good content. He's getting exclusive gameplay and developer interviews, obviously. Um, he's a uh, very, very good content creator. He's uh, uh, delivering this very well. Uh, so we just watched the PvP one. We are going to actually go into the combat one. So this one's a little bit longer. Hopefully there's some sections that we can skip through. But uh, 
if I remember correctly, this one is timestamp. Well, so we'll be able to uh pretty much jump to what we need to. Um here, let's actually skip uh let's go right here. Alpha one versus alpha two is the name of this chapter. Uh let's see, maybe they'll talk about what changed. Actually, here, let's jump let's just let's see what happens here, but we'll probably jump ahead of yeah, chapter. And I think that's a lot of what is <clears throat> excited me about PAX Day, why I've kind of committed the last snap a little year faster, I can see that my <laughs> life to covering it on YouTube. And uh, I think it's something that really excites a lot of players when it comes to... I'm going to get to oh, the combat cool. part. And thank you all for answering that. So that kind of makes me want to transition a little bit here and start talking about combat and some of the things that have changed with combat. And obviously a big one that you all mentioned was PvP, which I do have some questions with regards to that that we'll get to in a little bit. But... One that of the cloak look good. main things that I noticed, uh, kind of accidentally, when I was in combat in the, in the friends and family test, was I hit the X button, and something really interesting happened when I did when I was near. An you guys enemy, think the capes look good? My camera locked on to. A yes, they have a lock so on now. That is if you couldn't tell from the last gameplay thing that we watched. Feature, combat feature for the game, and I was wondering if you all would be able to kind of share what that is and kind of where we're going with that. Think about so, Elden Ring in really terms of having a lock <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, it's the... Grant that so thought off. Basically, what you found there was like the, the kind of initial implementation of like a target lock. Uh, so it's basically, a, yeah, it's a way for you to more easily just like focus on a single target. Uh, right now, uh, it's going to be extended so that it, you can use that target lock to kind of uh more quickly like cast spells so you don't like certain spells that are like single targeted that you can like quickly cast them on the lock target so we need to like extend it a little bit uh mm. but yeah it's 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 basically like an affordance feature for for combat for to lock onto a target and have the camera focused on it that you can toggle okay which is i, I mean which a lot of people to... are going to be you know, like uh be very accustomed to from from similar kind of action action based uh, yeah. combat games awesome yeah and i can see that system getting a yeah, little bit yeah i'm actually curious about that in too the are there any plans for like their similar games seem on point that i at least can remember in the past that have had medieval combat and camera locking were games like for honor where mm. you lock on where two players can lock on to their targets and then that allows for some really cool very cinematic yes. combat animations to happen where players are pairing each other and there's a lot more interactions that are going on there is that something that you all see as something being integrated into oh they found a random cave right here that's future, pretty cool or what, what what are some future plans for this system as well not specifically with the target lock. I mean, for any of those kind of interactions, like pairing right. and blocking, you should be able to do with or without locking target. I think I think the target Decently lock can, map, uh, like... could help just different kind of play styles more, or just like you know, it's it's, a, it, it's thought of as, it's more like a like a player's preference or not whether you like to use it, and it might synergize well with some abilities and some not like. For instance, dodge. Like Let's skip to the, this. The block breaks and block deflection and like parrying with a or like blocking with a shield or parrying with a weapon are things that you'll see in Alpha Two. Parrying with a uh, weapon—that's interesting, right? Dodging, not, but like dodging is basically it's not planned to be part of the kind of the the baseline mm -hmm. abilities that you have, but rather like in a suite of kind of abilities that you can get access to based on your gear. So it's basically part of your kind of combat fit, whether or not you have like a dodge ability. I like that. I I think I like it. So, assuming they're talking about light armor or maybe a medium armor, they said dodge won't be something just default to your character. It's going to be locked behind like the kind of gear that you have. I don't know if he means like a specific kind of gear is going to say, "Hey, you have dodge roll," or rather if he means like a armor weight. I'm assuming for right now he means like a armor weight like if you're in full plate, you're not going to have a dodge roll. Uh but maybe the leather uh, the medium armor is gonna have it. Boots with dodge in them. Yeah, see, that's that's what I'm wondering. That's what I'm wondering. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I do remember watching this section. I feel like they answered that question. Got it. So it's something that you would plan for with your equipment beforehand that would give you access to something like. 
Yeah. Yeah, and, and I guess the um, when we're picking the features for the combat system, what we're trying to find is a good balance on the the axis of the RPG progression that you're making in the game should be meaningful. So when you actually like go and like find rare resources to craft better gear and like build the crafters. That should be something that actually does materially reflect itself into your capability. Or like I feel that, Zyra. Combat. Um, and obviously, there's going to be like um, other abilities that you can unlock with the gear as well. That that like we want that to be something that actually does affect your yeah what you can do. Um, yeah, I get that, Zyron. Zyron says I'm not liking the style of how they implement the combat slash armor. I think that's going to be something I'll put into a lot of people. Um, I'm not going to get too uh i don't know worried about it right now because a lot of things will change and if you're feeling that way maybe i will feel that way upon playing and maybe a lot of other players will feel that way and the purpose of these alpha tests in theory is to get that feedback and if enough players voice that concern then i think we could see that changing it doesn't seem like something that they're married to or set in stone you know the thing like the spells being attached to armor maybe a lot of players don't feel like roll dodge should be attached to armor um maybe they changed their mind on the full loop pvp we don't know uh but it is good to know that this is stuff that we can expect to see from the upcoming uh alpha test they did say dodge is not going to be in this test uh i think but um yeah i i don't know if i'm a huge fan of it game design wise but it remains to be seen yeah and and we do want player skill to be part of what we do but simultaneously with this player skill element such as dodging um, because like if you do do introduce dodge in the game and like have everybody be able to dodge everything, okay. it makes the the core melee combat experience be very player skill driven. Because then actually like the and and for the dodging to feel meaningful, um, we need to craft the enemies that you're encountering the combat in a manner where the dodging like really is actually something that you have to do. Because otherwise the dodging feels kind of pointless. And if you're thinking huh. about an MMO scenario where you might have like twenty people fighting a group of enemies. And like, and and all the enemies like doing combat attacks that require players to dodge, you create this like super chaotic environment where like people are like rolling over like crazy and nobody can really tell what's going on. And and simultaneously, the 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 role of the gear easily is diminished in a manner that like, where where if you can dodge the enemy like the or the attacks in the first place, the so we're. This is quite the take, and I don't know if I agree or disagree with him because he's making sense. He's ha He has a good take, but the way my brain heard it initially is just saying, put more faith in the gear, not in player skill. I know that's not what he said, but <sighs> I'm on a fence of what he just said, and I don't know how to feel about it. Because he makes sense. Like, if you have mechanics where the boss swings something and everyone has to dodge, then you just have people dodge rolling all over the place. And But it almost seems like that puts more skill and combat uh, reflexes matter a little bit more. And that, could, that means, like, when players have to do that, that's more rewarding combat, uh, in my opinion. But he directly made a call back to classic MMORPG rules. Your character should be better than you are. Yeah, and that's and I think that's what he's meaning when he says like, uh, I mean, I think they'll put more, uh, what do you call it, uh, importance on the crafters and your crafting and the survival elements of this game. Like uh, we see it with tab target games, right? Like uh, rather than having an active skill, you have evasion chance. You have things like accuracy, et cetera, et cetera. It's not an FPS. I don't think that's relevant to this specific thing. I think more so if it's like. It's not an uh, it's not Elden Ring. It's not an uh, it's not meant to be that skillful, right? What is this jankiness? How you doing, Tango? Looking at some packs today. I don't know. I mean, it makes sense. I I don't disagree with him, but like, cause what he's saying, like I said, it makes sense. I just don't know how I feel about it, but I it, it makes sense. Long story short, is I I think it makes sense, especially for this game. Um, but yeah, let's let's continue to hear what they got to say. Er really trying to balance the combat system in a manner that it's like actiony and like feels really nice when you're performing things yourself but simultaneously it needs to be something that works in the context of an MMO where you actually have these bigger battles and you're working in a group um so it's, okay. it's not all about the just the yeah you're going in and like fighting a single enemy 
Yeah, just okay. to tack on to that, because this is kind of this is okay. this just comes from exactly this, that this kind of goal where we we try to we're trying to build the game to be like very affordable and like kind of approachable for people at like varying skill level with a varying kind of interest there in the game. Is. And when it comes to yeah, like and once those people are avid, even like yeah, avid and like understand the game and you know have some choices to make for like what kind of gear they put on and what kind of like like kits they like use in combat yeah to give them choices between like you know you know you might have something that is like just has is raw and very powerful and something that is like like very very skill based and has like a very high kind of skill ceiling and like potential like <laughs> yeah, potential kind of power but to be able to like pick and choose between these things um so like the base the base mechanics of combat we're trying to keep them fun and interesting and meaningful but okay. uh not introduce like a very high kind of skill cap where like everyone needs to be at this level skill or else they that's fair like, just can't participate in combat really well right Interesting. i guess a quick follow-up question is will we be seeing people in full plate armor dodge rolling Mary around Pippen. in combat anytime soon <laughs> well yeah i can i can i can talk to this so this is like we have a missing feature that is going to still be missing in alpha 2 but okay. uh but it's a future future plan, basically. So right now, the um, the armor that you can pick up, think, like that you can craft in the game, just plate is just objectively better than okay. than than like Air leather or chain. Wear plate. Uh, we have like a couple of plans to actually address that, but we okay. just we just don't have time before Alpha Two to do that. Uh, there's there's one thing that in, in the game right now that, that kind of counters this a little bit is that like the the spells that you can get access to, they um, some of the spells that are not intended for like a for like a plate wearing tank are only found oh, on okay. like leather or chain items or even cloth I think, okay. um, and so in the future really uh, interesting design like, choice we'll have like very simple kind of encumbrance tiers or like tiers basically so like if you're Immediately, if you're wearing like a plate chest piece, you're like off that tier, and that will not like allow that. you to cast any of the sp any spells. That so what they, what he's saying is like uh, think about it as a heavyweight, medium weight, and lightweight. Once you go above medium weight, you can't cast certain sorceries or spells. Is what he's basically saying, which I think is a really really cool dynamic, and I like that approach. However, I was sitting here thinking about this, you guys. And we kind of touched on this earlier, but how do you feel like, let me, let me phrase it like this. Do you really feel like a mage? Do you feel like a badass mage? If you don't, if your character truly doesn't know spells and it's the gear that's giving him access to these spells, like to me, that doesn't make me feel like a mage, like that class set, that class fantasy. I don't feel like a mage knowing that now it's one thing like you can't cast this skill without a wand that's fine you know that that makes sense but needing a specific leg piece to cast a certain fireball to me it just doesn't it doesn't sit right i don't know if i get that class fantasy that class dynamic knowing that i need to wear specific gear and how often will this gear vary is like the only one specific leg piece gonna have access to this fireball. So everyone every mage is gonna be running around with the same pants. Is it like RNG? Um what other questions do I have? Uh I don't know. And that's the like is there gonna be like a special wizard hat that every mage is running around with looking the same because that's the that's the one that comes with the blizzard spell or whatever. Um or are you going to learn these recipes so that you can craft gear with these spells built into it? And that's the way I assume it is. And from what I'm actually starting to recall here, you know, stuff like that. Um, I don't like, um, you know, especially in the full loop PVP situation, like losing my gear. And then all of a sudden I spawn, not knowing any of the spells meta says you wear this gear three different players running around. Yeah. Like with the same gear. Right. Nemesis says, like, the concept of mage is learn the skills while your weapons are conduits amplifying your spells. Not you need a wand to cast the most basic magic. Well said, Nemesis. 
well said. A lot like Conan Exiles, except Conan is better. This game looks exactly like Conan Exiles, extra sets. Hi, Matt. How hard it is going to be to craft a set of gear? I guess we'll find out. Uh, Eco encumbrance. Yeah. See, I don't. I don't know. I. I it's one of those things we're going to have to get our like hands on. Like have that pre-requirement. Like there are some some spells or like some special abilities that are only meant for like you know glass cannons, basically. That makes sense. And I, I, that I, uh, that I don't mind. They, I don't mind that part, like certain spells and abilities being locked to certain armor weights. What do we think of combat? Eh, it's it's definitely placeholder. The range combat doesn't look bad. The melee combat looks passable, and it's I know it's not saying much, but it's so much better than what we got with the last test, where the focus obviously was just on building and whatnot. Um, right now, the combat looks very placeholder. Very placeholder. It's not the worst thing out. Anyone know when the Alpha 2 invites are going out? I imagine sometime next week. Let's see. The test is on the 3rd. I know the devs are sending me my giveaway codes on the 22nd. So I'm wondering if we could expect to start seeing codes on the 20th. I'll keep an eye keep an eye on the Discord. I'm sure they'll be uh, letting us know. Because uh, the thing is, the signups end tonight. So in theory... We can expect a Discord message in the next couple of days saying, hey, now that the signups have concluded, here's when you can expect to, you know, make sure you're checking your email on this date. You should be seeing a code from us if you've been selected. Have they fixed any of the building? I'm pretty sure there was a video on Eltari's channel about that, but I'm sure it's, I'm sure the building, uh, being that that was the whole focus of the first test, is going to be really good. Can't be casted if you're wearing metal, for instance. Um and apart from those uh, kind of those kind of spell requirement considerations, uh, we'll we'll also introduce some of that into kind of the uh, economy around like performing, you know, sprinting and swimming and uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it, it's mainly it's mainly around like how you've put your kind of kit together. Yes, yeah, so, so what's the the because like as you know like the we have the skill based uh, like progression of the characters. Are we not locking any one of the characters in any specific like class? Yes, but what we're doing is like you actually did the gear that you were Classless. effectively defines your capabilities in combat, and and for a clan to be effective in dungeons, you actually do need to have people spec out to a specific set of gear mm. for them to be able to participate in certain roles. So like, yeah, you definitely do want the tanks to be wearing plate, yeah. but your healer in the back is not going to be very effective if if they're trying to wear the same armor. Mm -hmm. Got it. So would that be almost like a a like? In some games, we've seen weight systems where that's exactly you know, what I was thinking earlier. Have heavy plate mail attached and equipped that will kind of increase Lock a bar up. to a certain point, and then once uh -huh. you get to that that's point, exactly you're how I was visualizing the question. Kind of medium armor class, and then you'll keep equipping plate, and then now you're in the heavy armor class. Is that kind of where you see it going in the future, or is it more so going to be linked yeah. to these? Other Lovely looking world, by the way. Like stamina and uh, uh, we're we're kind of weighing pre between a couple of proposals for it for it, and we will. I hope they said we'll decide on it as soon as we're sweet. like getting to a place where we can actually implement it. We're we're gonna kind of we'll of err on the side over, of just yeah. being keeping it very simple, like for the player to understand. So like as soon as we we might go as simple as like if if you're if you're just wearing a single heavy plate chest. piece, you're you're in heavy class, so you might as well just. Be oh, at that point, okay. Uh, instead okay. of, yeah, uh, that's you know, that's going, a like, simple way to do it with it. Okay, but uh, yeah, TBD. Now I kind of wanted to pivot a little bit. Um, Pocket with the raid. Thank you so much, like, dude. Uh, a lot of players. Here. Pocket, let's go. Shout out the Pocket. Really good art. Really good art. Thank you so much, dude. Welcome on in. We're looking at some uh. Pax footage. Who were in Alpha One, who were watching oh, Alpha about One. Stan. One of the things that they noticed, I, I even was able, one of the final streams. Oh, by the way, I, uh, chat, can you guys let me know if that raid music was too quiet? I can turn it up for next time. Did of the game was, and I'm sure all of you might have seen it at one point, was we went and ran through a dungeon completely naked and we pretty much cleared the whole dang thing. We just had enough players and enough people mm -hmm. punching enemies yep. um how has the team gone to address that as playing the current build of the game i've noticed that it is not very easy to kill much of anything um <laughs> right now. so uh would you maybe
Um, I'll skip this part pretty much. I, I do remember this part. They pretty much said um, they made the PVE mobs a little bit easier because in Alpha 1, you were able to like bare fist and just run through a dungeon. Uh, El Tari, I think he said they did a whole dungeon like with no armor, just straight fist and got through the dungeon in the first test. So they basically just go on to say that, you know, they fixed that. Um, they talk about consumables later. Uh, let's just skip to combat progression or is this the same section but basically it's pretty linear and like all of the pv content is, is linear as well but it's like steeper so like the gap actually widens as you progress through the game um linear. so something that you might be able to solo the like, one beta? Like, it looks pretty good of like even tier difficulty early on in the game uh you know. this is a really good month for testing is it not you got the thorn and liberty uh closed beta test happening we're about to get pax day uh, once human uh dropped, I think that was earlier this month. You know, a lot of a lot of testing going on, a lot of testing going on. I might be forgetting something actually, but there's definitely a lot of testing going on. You're not going to be able to do that when you when you reach like you know played my you know when you reach later in the game. You either that. need more people to. I work like with, it. I like or it. Or you need to it's go okay. and like you know. TNL will be my placeholder. It'll be my waiting room for Ashes of Curation. And um, I'll probably post this video tomorrow or the day after. But I got a, uh, a video coming out in regards to Ashes and Throne of Liberty and whatnot. So you guys stay tuned for that on YouTube. Dune. Duh. I forgot about Dune. Dune is also uh, in a very closed uh, testing. Yeah. No. Yeah. I Dune is. Uh, so I'll be honest. I'll be open with you guys right now. It's Ashes of Creation, Pax Day, Dune Awakening for me. Those three are on my radar. Now, I don't want to get too... I don't want to obsessively follow too many games that don't exist. So Ashes is the one that I'm just like... you. you well, obviously, you guys know. I'm scoped in. Like I'm like, give me any little inch of news and I'm going to go with it. Like I'm so excited just counting the days. And then everything else, I'm trying not to, because I think that's what I ran into with Ashes of Creation. It's like, you, you get on it too early. And this is not me complaining, because I know there's people that's been following the game since Kickstarter, <laughs> like six years or something, seven years. Um, but, you know, you don't want to follow too many projects before they're even close to being ready. So you kind of want to make a hierarchy like what uh, Gers just did there in chat. He says, AOC, Dune, then Pax Day. Yes. Um so it's very you got to be mindful you know um as far as what you're going to follow and which one is like going to be at the top of your list how you doing rage welcome on in so well doesn't albion do this a lot of games do this actually as far as being a classless system dim uh then so like a uh, new world throne and liberty actually i can't think of another one besides those two and i guess you're saying albion the War Within beta. Oh, The War Within. I actually just learned about that game today on uh, Twitter. Someone shared something or it got suggested to me. Oh, Quinfall. There we go. Quinfall. <laughs> Honorable mention for Quinfall. For sure. For sure. Um, you're a Conan Exiles guy. So Dune is interesting. They're building mechanics. Yeah. Well, things that I expect of... PAX Day to have really good building mechanics just because of how presentable uh and good their first alpha test had decent building mechanics i expect people are going to build like legit villages man i got that's one thing i know the combat's not where it needs to be but if i had to take a look at what they're doing it looks like they're focusing on the world uh developing the world the art visuals and everything like that then it's housing right after that then after that you're looking at crafting and then i think we're going to see the pve and the combat last you know and those are your main pillars of a mmo right and then you can worry about progression and tweaking this and that but that seems to me be the order that they're going in because obviously the combat has been made presentable and decent right um you know compared to what they had before uh but so you can tell that that wasn't their like only that wasn't what the point of this test is like it's like an introductory but they're looking at more like PvP mechanics and stuff like that. And I think you're going to see the housing and building. Hello Kitty Island Adventure, dude. Dude, I was a Kickstarter for that. No, I'm playing. <laughs> you get nothing out of PAX, but excited for AOC and Doom for sure. Yeah, it'll be nice. I don't know how long this uh, test lasts, but I, I definitely want to take a look at it for sure. Um, But I'm actually going to I'm going to call it right there, chat. Let's hang out for like a couple more minutes, but I want to call it here Um, once again. 
Uh, and I'm going to do a little recap here. But once again, shout out to El Tari. Link is in the description, you guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe. if you're uh, Even if you're on the fence after what you saw, everything like that, make sure you give him a subscribe. That way you can keep up to date with uh, developers and changes upcoming and see if it's for you you know it's still alpha it's a free alpha to test there's no reason not to sign up today's the last day um i'll be streaming it uh and if you guys want to link up let's go gather do some dungeons together see how far this mmo currently is uh well how much progress they've made and everything like that but yeah once again shout out to eltari really appreciate you uh letting us watch your video today um so let's recap Brown straight advantage. Yes, that is my referral code. I don't know if you guys saw my community post, but yes, Brown straight advantage gang gang. That's going to be the name of the guild, right? That's got to be the, <laughs> that's got to be the name of the guild. So for you guys that don't know and watching this without context, uh, I did a community post and there was actually a referral uh, uh, friend code that, you know, you can use to link to your profile and your friends could use the same code. The auto generated one that we got was uh, Brown straight advantage and it is a uh, it is a hilarious uh, random three RNG words. But anyways, to recap, combat will need some work, but I'm excited to try it because it's so much better than what it was. And it's at least passable. Um, the world looks very good. Um, I'm excited to play. Games look good. Uh, cons. I wouldn't even list the full loot thing as a con because I think that's going to excite some people. I think some people are going to like it. What I will say the con is for me is spells and skills being so tied to gear that's not something i'm sure i like but i get how it makes sense in terms of the gear progression that they're going for and maybe they change it later maybe they don't but dropping all your spells in pvp seems kind of like a like a feels bad man you know but i get it you know you find this legendary great sword and this great sword specifically allows you to use this skill that um, makes your great sword a freaking yellow lightsaber. It glows now, and you get access to this skill called uh, Impaling Holy Lunge. And so your great sword, you lunge for it a small distance while the sword glows yellow, and then it leaves like a little holy magic damage over time. I literally just thought of that off the top of my head. Just bear with me. <laughs> but, you know. I can get how finding that sword is really cool and it adds to the gear progression and the loot drops and aren't, you know, people like that kind of stuff. So I get it, but I'm more so worried about it as a mage for some reason for a mage. It just doesn't sit right with me. If you choose to go for a mage, having your spells being locked to certain things. Um, but if you're able to learn these recipes for these skills and I'm then able to assign this spell to this chess piece, which is what I think might be the case. I don't think that's too bad. You know, you learn this spell and then now when you craft your next uh, chain mail or your next robe for your mage, you can assign it to that. If that's the case, it's not the worst thing ever, honestly. Right. It's not the worst thing. And then I can kind of understand it's only going to suck in <laughs> when you lose that thing in PvP, but you don't want to bring your good stuff in this PvP zone, at least not your best stuff. So I don't think it's going to be too bad, but that's my final thoughts. Um, I really, uh, I really like this project. Um, you guys know I'm Ash is a creation fanboy, but this is just, this is something to keep an eye on. This looks, this looks good. This looks good. I'm excited to test it. Uh, for anyone that's interested, I'll probably do a community post and, um, you know, we'll try to link up on the same server and build some things and slay some things and it'll be fun. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Tomorrow, we have another episode of our weekly Ashes of Creation live stream. Ooh, excuse me. Our weekly Ashes of Creation live stream, The Voices of Vera with Is There No One Else and Myself. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be doing a guild interview. A guild interview. Uh, interviewing a guild leader. So that'll be some fun stuff. So I will see you guys uh, tomorrow around 730-ish Eastern. Uh, appreciate you guys being here and watching this with me. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, don't forget, today is the last day to sign up for the PAX Day Alpha. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. And before we uh, head out, let me double check to see if anyone's live on Twitch that we can rate. Um, let's see. A whole guild interview. Um, let's see. I don't see no one really. Nope. We'll just call it there. 
Uh, also, War Within Beta signups. To, oh, perfect. I'll have to look into that because I remember I watched something on Twitter about that and I remember like liking it. So I have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's what you're talking about is uh what I'm thinking of. But yeah, we'll see. But yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure you have uh, notifications. We will be doing another episode of Voices of Air tomorrow. Uh, oh, by the way, I should probably mention this. It will only be on Twitch. Tomorrow's episode will only be on Twitch on my end. It will only be on Twitch because what I plan on doing, um, I'll go ahead. Spoiler alert. It's going to be an interview with a dwarf guild. And we did a interview with the other dwarf guild before. And so what I plan on doing is compile, compiling uh, the interviews with the two dwarf guilds together for a standalone video. So tomorrow I'm not going to have that one on YouTube. I'll only be streaming it to Twitch. And then uh, maybe I'll do a game stream after that, but we'll see. So, uh, yeah, just a heads up for those of you guys that are exclusively on YouTube. Uh, but, yeah, thank you guys so much. We're going to call it there.